great pleasure to welcome all of you to the 6th Language Festival. As you plenty know, this is the first time we celebrate this event online due to the coronavirus pandemic that has affected a significant part of the people around the world. This year, the festival has a special theme, Going Green. The purpose of implementing these projects in the school community is to lead students and teachers to environmentally friendly and ecologically responsible decisions and lifestyles which can help protect the environment for the current generation and the ones to come. Let me remark the importance of going green. First, we have to think about the enormous amount of people that lives in our planet, which is about 7,000 million, and all the resources everyone needs for covering their basic needs, like food, water, and clothing. Industries produce all of it, but also they cause a lot of damage to our environment, especially to the atmosphere. This is why we have to implement sustainable lifestyles so we can reduce our impact. I know that everyone has heard about how important it is to take care of our only planet and sometimes it can even get boring because we hear it so much and everywhere, but let's remember that these are real issues that are affecting every living thing in the planet, including us right now and the future generations. Also, let's remember that with our actions, as little as they look, we can create big changes. For example, if you clean your mail inbox, you can reduce the melting pot. This sounds crazy, but it's true. Now, finally, I recommend to stay well informed about every environmental issue and to share our knowledge with other people so they can get environmental awards. Now, stay online and enjoy every activity your classmates have ready for you. See you soon. Be well. Hi everyone, all the way to the other side of the world. Let me start by saying that it is my pleasure to be here today and also by thanking Teacher Josue for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this event. So welcome to the 2021 edition of the English Festival. I would also like to say sorry for the poor setup of the video. I would have liked to do something else, maybe with a nicer background. But let's say that I had some technical issues, so right now I'm just shooting from my room, so sorry for that. Since I graduated from our school five years ago or so, I would guess that most of you don't know me, so let me start by briefly introducing myself. My name is René Villela. I was part of the 2015 prom and I spent 12 years of my life in our wonderful school. Right now I'm living in Japan. I've been living here for the past five years, so after graduating I came here to study. So pretty much you can say by, that at this point my life is an anime, so there's that. <laughs> Since I'm not really sure what to say or what to talk about and this is an English festival, I would like to maybe tell you about my experience with this wonderful language and then see where it goes from that. Like I said, I entered our school when I was six or seven years old, yeah, six years old. and. Let's be honest, when you're a kid you can barely even speak Spanish and you're not really thinking of becoming bilingual, so let's say that I started to learn English from zero. I want you to quickly, just, just very briefly, think about the name of our school. Colegio Español Padre Arrupe. You can clearly see that we have a link with Spain and Spanish language. In fact, I would say that by the time of graduation we are like Spanish language masters because we have the usual lenguaje class, right? And on top of that we have Spanish literature and we, we read so much, so yeah, it's pretty pretty tough in that sense. But what I want to say is that we are not the American school, we are not the British Academy, so as far as I'm aware we are not supposed to be a fully bilingual school or at least 
it wasn't when I graduated. I've heard that in these past few years of school is going towards that direction that they want to really increase the level of the English education in general but I, I, I don't know I think it's not at the point where they can say well fully bilingual and I don't know if that's the final goal to be a fully bilingual institution but my point is what I want to say is that even though I didn't have an official fully bilingual education by the time of well by the time I left because I graduated even though I didn't take any extra English lessons on Saturdays or throughout the week I had a very decent command of the English language when I graduated and not only me I know other guys also who are studying abroad there's one other guy here in Japan one more in South Korea another guy in Switzerland and after spending a few years in our school they also had a very nice level of, of English fluency point being that you have the most amazing tools at your hand. In my humble opinion, the pace at which classes are given, if you put some effort, is, is really adequate, it's, it's easy to follow. It's not overwhelming, you only have, what, two, two or three 45 minute session per week, so you have time to rest. You have tried to re you have time to review. So at that pace, learning a new language is a really enjoyable experience because you have time to learn, you have time to review or even learn new things on your own. And not only that, of course, you're not going to become fully bilingual by just getting good scores on your test or or I don't know, the listening exercises in class or the book presentations or whatever you also have to do some activities outside your class but you still you, you have the most amazing tool you have internet some of you even have Netflix you what you can do is well, you can start by well what watching your favorite TV show with English audio and Spanish subtitles then you can do English audio with English subtitles and then when that you you get comfortable with that you can just remove the subtitles altogether and just challenge yourself and do English audio you can learn new words and phrases from music in my case I learned a lot from video games you can start by easy games like in my case I played a lot of Pokemon and the level of the language that's used in Pokemon is very easy to learn and then you can well try more challenging video games until you reach the level of well for those of you who know a game called for example The Witcher 3 where they speak in a very strong British accent and they use what well, very old words and it's really hard to understand if you don't have a very decent language language level so I would like you to encourage all of you to do the most that you can with all the amazing tools that you have at your disposal. You have great teachers that not only have the knowledge to help you, they also want to help you. I know that, well, for example, teacher Josue can be very hard on some of you if he feels that you can do better and you are not really trying, but trust me, it's for your own good there are only benefits to learning a new language so I would like you to think of that maybe you don't you feel that you don't really like English and I, I understand in Japan most people hate it because for them it's very hard to learn because it's so different from their native language and trust me the average level of uh, English command of uh, the average Japanese is, is very low so I understand if you don't like it but trust me just try to think of it it's for your own good and there are nothing but advantages and one of the things in school that I feel that really helped me 
was, I, I guess you still do it, that you read a book in English, you read a book, then you try to summarize it with your own words, and then present your summary in front of the class. That's a great exercise. You improve your reading, well, by reading, of course, you also improve your vocabulary because if you don't understand, you're supposed to go and look for the meaning of the word or phrase that you don't understand. So you improve your grammar, your vocabulary by, by reading. And then you also improve your fluency and just how, how you think of English when you write the summary in your own, wor in your own words. And then you improve your fluency when you present in front of your class and you get feedback from, from the teacher. So I would say that that is one of the best exercises that you can, you can do for yourself. And yeah, I would say that that was one of the things that helped me the most. And maybe when you reach some level, if you feel that you need more practice because, well, we have very limited time in class, it's only 45-minute sessions and there are 30 of us per classroom so there's not much time to really try to practice your, your speaking most, more than anything. I would suggest you go and take specialized courses just to practice your speaking because I think that's what uh, there's not much time to do in class and it's hard to do on your own and it's better to do it with more people so so yeah and well now let me share some photos with you and see what we can say about them so like I was saying I wanted to share a few photos with you so let's start by looking at this one this one was taken during my last year at our school so in 2015 don't really remember which event, I think it was uh, Feria Española or something like that. And these were my classmates. Not all of them, uh, some of them are missing. Like the guy I mentioned that's, the, that's now in South Korea, he was also my classmate, but for some reason he's, down in, he's not in this photo. I don't know where he was. And we were a very close group of friends. We still have a, a Facebook chat up to this day and we share memes and just, I don't know, discuss about relevant topics like politics or, I don't know, also, but mostly for memes and playing video games together, so up to this day we still have a very nice friendship. Let's see what else do I have here. Oh, and Profe Melki, un saludo. What else do we have here? So. This was taken during the prom party of the 2014 class. Even though I graduated in 2015, because, well, these guys chose General, they, they graduated before me and I was, class, uh, I was their classmate on multiple occasions, so yeah, I had to go to their party. Oh, by the way, this girl right here, She's also in South Korea now. She moved there, I think, three months ago or so. And she's now studying biology in South Korea. So yet another example of what you can do if you really focus. So yeah, another nice photo and very nostalgic to see all these young faces. What else? Oh yeah, this one. This guy right here, he was also from our school. And this photo was taken in Paraguay. I forgot to mention, but during high school I used to compete in Physics Olympiad, just like this guy. So this was taken during a Physics Olympiad in Paraguay. And this dam here is at the border with Brazil. So it gets water from the Amazon River and convert it into electricity. These two guys right here, I met them in the Olympiad program and this girl right here, she's now in Canada and this guy right here, he's now in Spain. Funny though that out of the four of us, I would say that this guy was the more talented, but 
sadly he couldn't speak English and that's why he ended up in Spain. That was his best opportunity without English. So uh, I think he's, he's doing fine in Spain, so it's not a sad story, but his options were limited because he couldn't speak English. So yeah, another reason. What else? Okay, this one is with, it's already in Japan, so during the first year in Japan, I took like a Japanese language course and these were my classmates, so people from many countries like South Korea, South Korea, India, uh, another Indian guy, Mongolia, uh, what else? Ah, this guy's from Peru, uh, Bulgaria, Turkey, uh, Russia, so yeah, many, many countries. What else? And this one was taken three months ago during my graduation. I graduated from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. If I dare say one of the best universities in Asia and in the world for science and technology. So in my case, I studied physics and yeah, yeah, very tough, but really re rewarding experience. And these were some of my friends, like the Indian guy from the previous photo and this guy's from Thailand. The three of us used to live together. We shared an apartment and this guy's also from, from Thailand, India, Thailand, another guy from Thailand. Yeah, there are many guys from Thailand in Japan. And this guy's from Malaysia and this guy's from Vietnam. So yeah, very nice and beautiful final photo to end my interve intervention in this event. So thank you for listening and remember, learning English is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Not only English, if you can, if you like French or you like German, I don't know, J just learning another language has so many benefits. It opens many doors and well, I'm not an expert in that field, but many research indicates that having more than one language that you can speak the changes your brain in, and makes you smarter, essentially. So, yeah. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.
please slow down, take a breath, and be kind. Don't forget to have a Music. Thank you. Hello, I am Ariana Daniela. Puente Sardón. I from for level five. The tulip is a buen chul. Like a mosquito. My friend the puppet. Ready to dance? So now, let's see. Oh, favorite. Mrs. Dancing. Hop! Hop! Stop! So, stand up and dance.
Squen de Zim. Squen o Dem. Now the tea. Or Clasmid. Telling about Paris life. Francis Halpern. Hello, I am Juan Francisco Iraeta Martinez. My section is Fifth Section D. And I'm going to sing a song. Let's go. go hard, hard, hey, ho, here we go. Pirate ship, we sail the sea. And hey, ho, here we go. Pirate's life, I know. Go blue seas, we feed the birds. Fishy sweets, to make it go. Pirate's life, I know. With the storms, the crashing seas, the world of storms, and the cold sea breeze, the oars go where the water flows, pirate's life I know, hey ho, here we go, pirate ship we sail the sea, hey ho, here we go, pirate's life I know, I don't know why. Thank you. Hello, my name is Matias Alejandro, sexto año de vida. I will talk about our planet. Fantastic, our planet is everything we have. Hello, my name is Andrea Paola Escobar Martinez. I am from six. Year section A. My house is in San Rafael Cedros. It's a great place to live. I live with my mom, my brother, and my father. Thank you. This is our home. We found home there. Our oh, planet is covered in flowing water. We have the better eye. The most important is full of life. Separate our planet. Our habitat animals. Plants, person, and the most important. Look here. Now it's time to take it away. So let's do it. Our misses. They have prepared. This incredible thing. Just for you. My 
hay pie por cámara. We appreciate your part of our English Fest 2021. Thanks to our parents, teachers, classmates, friends, and you. See you next time. It is a pleasure for us to present you part of our work. We really want you to enjoy. In this Golden Fest, we are going to present you some videos of how to take care of the environment. But first, we want to share a story and some phrases with you. Thank you. Share a story about sharing. Best seed. There once was a farmer who grew the most excellent wheat. Racism, he won the power for which it is haunting. I waste one man time to help to help our essence. Peter Rarrahi was sharing his best seed with his neighbors today. For plant the seed is a wheat. That's simple, the farmer replied, the wind spread the pollen from everyone, wet and carries from field to field. If my neighbors grew inferior with cross-pollination, would the grace everyone's wheat, including mine? If I'm to grow the best wheat, I must help my neighbors grow the best we as well. This is the only excellent advice for growing the best crop, but also great advice for those who live your life. Remember that the value of your life is measured by the life you touch with love kindness, respect, and hope. For me, there is not a elevator. To success, you have to take the stairs. You have potential to make beautiful things. Always keep in your mind that peace begins with a smile. Your smile will give you a positive aspect that will make people feel
Plastic pollution. The problem that presents itself to us is the misuse of plastic, since now there is an excessive use of it, which increasingly pollutes our environment. When we use plastic and by not reusing it correctly, it reaches rivers, beaches, seas, and oceans. When ended up in these places, not only our home but the home of animals is contaminated. Plastic materials affect fauna in two ways important, when creatures become entangled in it and when they ingest it. In this way, millions of animals of more than 370 species around the world eat plastic, even the most microscopic plankton. Also, air pollution by plastic is something that many of us are not aware of, but the truth is that it affects our health without even realizing it. Manufacturing releases a very amount of toxins into the air, but in addition to this, many of the plastic worldwide are burnt, thus releasing many other toxic components that cause us health problems. A third of all plastic waste ends up in solid and water. Most of this plastic disintegrates into particles of less than 5 mm, known as microplastics, and these are further decomposed into nanoparticles and are entering the food chain without even realizing it, which becomes very harmful. Why it's so important to reduce the use of plastics? Reducing the use of plastic is important because plastic production requires an enormous amount of energy and resources. This causes carbon emissions and contributes to global warming. What can you do about plastic waste? Plastic waste is a huge problem and reducing our use of plastics is the most efficient and easy way to fight the problem. So the best thing that we can do is to prevent new resources of plastics from entire environment and find a way to reuse plastics. Solutions Tips to reduce your plastic consumption Minimizing the consumption of plastic is much easier than it seems. Avoid single-use plastics like drinking straws, single-use plastic such as plates and cutlery made from this material. Make your lives easier but seriously harm the planet. These types of products have viable alternatives and it is you're going to opt for them. Replace plastic toppers with glass or stainless containers. If you eat at work, the topperware is part of your day. We suggest you change your routine and beat on glass or stainless steel containers. Not only will the planet thank you, so will your health because some of these objects can realize harmful substances. Awareness to your environment about the importance of reducing the consumption of plastics. If, in addition to reducing your consumption of plastics, you get with your example that your family, friends, and co-workers also do it, the impact of your action for the good of the planet will increase exponentially. Avoid using cosmetics that contain microplastic. Buy a biodegradable brush and wear natural fabrics. The market currently offers a multitude of alternative plastic-free products and the offer is only growing from microplastic-free lipstick or brushes made from wood to t-shirts made from natural fabrics. Veron reuse and gap certain packaging a second chance. If you have no choice but to buy a plastic bottle or plastic pack at the supermarket, use them instead of turning them into waste. You can fill the bottle as many times as you want, and the pack can be used to store other foods. Recycle the gum because they are made of plastic too. Most of the chewing gums that are currently marketed include plastic in their composition. Try to reduce their consumption and throw them into the right container for recycling. You can also opt for natural and organic chewing gum.